Iron Man is the best way to play RuneScape is something I have said countless times over the past year. So when I came back to the game to fall in love with it again, I decided to make a hardcore Iron Man. Well, technically I made two, but let's not dwell on that. As for a goal for the account, I'd love to set a lofty goal like going for insane final boss, but I doubt I'm at that kind of level, so we'll just take it a step at a time. And when we do inevitably die, we'll be continuing on as a normal Iron Man. For now, let's hop into Gelenor and get this journey started. After being told how to skip the tutorial, my first objective was to make myself a little more resilient to accidents. To that end, we went and grabbed the Pathfinder gear as well as completed the archaeology tutorial for a relic that increases our health by 500. It's not going to make us immortal or anything, but it's a dang sight better than what you start with. From there, we went and got some easy early XP, using the circus to get magic, ranged and agility, and then doing the museum quiz for a jumpstart in Hunter and Slayer. Since I lost my first attempt to speedrunning quests, I decided to take things a little slower the second time around, getting up to 30 magic before starting to quest. Both mobs I tried for this I'd recommend for different reasons. The trolls in Burthorpe dropped some early game herbs, but the spiders in the Lumbridge catacombs were a bit quicker and dropped silk that can be used to simultaneously train crafting. And now for the elephant in the early game, wieldy events. I'm going to be trying to do as many special events as possible as getting a decimation drop early can really catapult an account forward. I'm a bit sad that there's no longer a deterministic way to obtain this weapon, though I'm not sure I'd want to do the 112 wieldy tasks in PvP again, regardless of being a hardcore. Outside of that golden goose, wieldy events give a sizable XP reward and the loot bags give some incredible supplies for iron men, ranging from ashes for prayer to dragons for the player owned farm, so they're very much worth doing throughout the lifespan of the account. Back on track, now that we're up to 30 magic it's time to start doing some of those early game quests, and for that we need a source of food. For this I decided on getting stews from the Sears Village pub. It's a bit of a tedious process, but this is one of the best food sources in the early game before you start fishing yourself. They give the same amount of health as salmon does. So with our inventory full of food and some tier 30 weapons that we picked up from the Portzer in Magic Shop, we went and tackled Witch's House. I chose to do this early simply because of the huge Constitution XP reward. It put us all the way up to 28, meaning we have 3300 health already. Now that we're a bit more robust, it's time to start working towards our first mini goal. That being the 1k total level required to buy a second life. Unlike in old school, RS3 hardcores can have up to 3 lives, unlocking the second at 1k total for 100k GP, and the third at 1.6k total for 10 mil. So we want to get that 1k total as quick as we can to get that safety net in place. Naturally, for the early game, that means hitting up some classic quests such as Tree Gnome Village and Fight Arena for some easy attack levels. Next up, in part to contribute to the 1k total goal, and partially to give us a productive AFK activity, we completed Monk's Friend and then trained fire making up to 30, in order to complete Sea Slug, which gets us up to 24 fishing, and we are going to be doing a lot of fishing on this account. Okay, UI fixed up again, and we have caught enough fish to get ourselves up to 39 fishing. I think I'm just going to keep doing... Um, fly fishing all the way to 52. 52 is when you can get belt fish from Menaphos and basically 52 onwards I'll just do all my fishing there. Not the fastest fishing method but it gives some really good mid game food. So for now I need to get my cooking level up a bit so we can cook these trout and salmon and that will be plenty of food to get us through the next stage of questing because I am not making that mistake again. I am not gonna get myself killed just because I didn't take food questing because I'm an idiot, basically. Okay, to get our 15 cooking, we're just cooking up some anchovies and shrimp from Draenor, and then I'm gonna head to the Lumbridge Castle, use the range there to cook up the trout. If we get the level, I'll also do the salmon, but maybe we won't get the level, I'm not actually 100% sure. I was thinking about waiting until I got the fort kitchen unlocked, 
but I believe on an Iron Man it's actually going to take two days unless I mine the limestone myself in order to get the fort set up because I'm going to have to go to Keldegrim and buy like 250 bricks per day and you need like 380 or something so I'm going to have to do that over two days. I should definitely get the fort quest started soon though because you can at least buy planks from the guy in the fort so maybe we'll be taking a quick stop over there soon. Okay, we didn't do a quick assistant on this account, so let's get that started and then we can use the range here. I don't think I've ever opened this shop. I forgot my pot and bucket, so I went to come grab some and he just sells red berries. I'm just going to grab these because why not? I'm going to need the pie dishes as well. Need to make a bunch of red berries for Fergo throughout the game, so makes sense too. And we'll grab a chef's axe. I think I need that for a clue scroll at the very least, if not another quest. And there we go, that's Cook's Assistant about to be done, which actually gives us some sardines, which is some nice starter food. I think I'm probably beyond the use of it at this point, since we'll now be able to... Oh, I forgot that gave you cooking XP as well. Yeah, that was that was a mistake, not doing that sooner. But now we can cook up our trout and actually have some reasonable food for doing some of these quests and hopefully not dying to waterfall again. Turns out Trout Hill's way less than I thought, so I might actually have to train all the way up and cook these salmon before we actually get some solid food. Okay, there we go, salmon heals a good amount, 625 apiece. So annoyingly, we're going to end up with mostly trout when we fish this stuff, but to be honest, once we get 52 fishing and get into Menaphos, not really going to be a problem at all. Okay, with all our fish cooked up, I think it's time to kind of get parity with where we were at with questing before. Notably, all the quests that gave us a bunch of herb lore XP, like Violet's Blue, Violet's Blue 2, swept away. That got us up to 33 herb lore last time, so let's go do those three and get that herb lore up. Okay, Violet's Blue done. Throw these lamps into herb lore. Part of me is tempted to throw some into farming so that we can start the... Yeah, so I'm going to throw these two lamps into farming so we can do beehive runs and then we'll throw the three lamps from the next quest into... Oh, so that will get us to 17? Not quite. Dang, that was... Okay, I needed to throw all three into farming. I'll figure out another way to get the last two levels there. And there we go. Viola's blue two done. So we threw all of these into herb lore. So let's head over to Draenor so we can do the swept away quest which gives us it's going to give us about 3000 herb lore xp which will be very nice okay that's 10 balls and we're not quite at 32 herb lore but we're not that far off so while we're in the area i'm actually gonna do ernest the chicken i did this on the other account because it's four quest points for barely any work and yeah it's just it's worth getting done for the quest points that'll then take us over 25 so we can go get our dice and get that nice little cash influx there we go ernest the chicken complete that will be 26 quest points some feathers eggs a little bit of cash but the big cash reward is i do not even have the varic lodestone yet let's um let's go get that okay here we go reclaim our dice from may Mainly after the 250k, but hopefully a fortunate component as well. That is actually a fortunate, so one and a half mil now. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. But yeah, that is indeed a fortunate component. We are very happy with that. Okay, since I'm still feeling rough, I don't want to make a huge amount of progress off stream. So what I'm instead going to do is do all the archaeology that I did on the previous account again so basically get all of these erosian one collection done twice i actually left out two items from that last time so i'll remember to actually finish the whole thing this time and then i also had started on the zemarakian one stuff just the just the seller you actually out level the early archaeology stuff very quickly but it's worth staying at each spot until you've actually restored all the artifacts that you need from that spot simply because you need them for collections and in order to actually advance through like, the assistant, um, guildmaster ranks, etc. In archaeology, you need to do all the collections, so there's no point skipping stuff, really. 
It's also the reason why you don't really want to boost archaeology, because it's just no, no real point. Maybe, maybe the early levels, like, skip straight to using a Myth Matok or something to make this little bit a bit quicker, but compared to other skills, it's just not worth it. Okay, we're taking a quick break from our archaeology to come up and do the Evil Tree event, which is good for two reasons. One, it gave us enough farming XP to get us up to and over the 17 farming that we need for the beehives, so we can go start those off once we're done here. And secondly, it's going to give us a bunch more bags of rewards, which always nice. So let's see what we get. The ashes are incredible for this part of the account. The necronium salvage is going to be useful once we can elk stuff. I think the muddy keys kind of duds. Um, the energy may be useful once we start invention. And the big bag, dragon rider boots. I mean, it's a, it's a collection log slot. And uh, also 200k cash, you get so much money from these. But yeah, that's a uh, reasonable pair of boots with a prayer bonus. I, I don't realistically think it's going to be particularly useful by the time we get 60 defense, but nice to get it, I guess. Okay, with our now 17 farming, we can come over here in the player and farm and fill up these beehives. Each beehive is going to take 27 wood leaves, which is 27 hours of XP it will generate. So basically, once a day, we come back here and get a load of farming experience. So this is the first thing we're going to be adding to our list of daily scape activities, which is not a term I enjoy, but they are a almost mandatory grind for new iron men. New accounts in general, to be honest. Okay, we're up to 39 archaeology and we have completed Zerosian 1. Actually completed it properly this time, I didn't leave anything out. So we've got the seal of the Prefectus Praetorio, which is something I actually learned how to say thanks to this game. And then we'll also go hand in the collection to Lent, Lucia even. That'll give us a nice 9,000 chronotes. So the way I'm training archaeology is just complete everything you need from every spot as you go. You get quite a few levels early that give you earlier metox, which is always nice. And it also just means you're not going to have to go back to do collections or go back to low level spots to do some of the weirder collections later on, so like the hat ones or the paintings ones. Now, I don't know if we actually have enough energy to harness it. We do. Okay, nice. So unexpected diplomacy is very nice specifically for the Mazcab rep because you get the rep from Demi Forest in increments of five. The 10% increase rounds up to 6, so it's actually a 20% increase, which is very, very nice for a grind that is going to take us probably, this is calculatable, you need 5,000 rep, so there's 9 nodes, you get 6 rep a node, 54 rep a node, yes, yeah, so it's going to take about 100 days, yeah, that's like we're going to have to start soon. But now though, because I am feeling stupidly ill and don't want to stream, I want to keep just doing some chill AFK stuff, so I'm going to keep working on archaeology, and... To that end, I am going to I'm gonna head over to Anacronia. I'm gonna unlock the lodestone and I'm gonna do our first week of Herby Werby. Not gonna use the reset token or anything because my herbal level isn't really high enough to merit that right now. But we'll build up to that next week instead. Okay, there we go. Anacronia base camp established and now we need to build the lodestone, which means we need to put so while that's Working away, we can go do our Herby Werby for the week. There we go, first Herby Werby done, almost 34 Herblore. We'll get a lot more XP from this next week. And as for what we're going to pick up from the shop, I think... So I don't want to buy a seed now, because otherwise I won't be able to buy the herb bag and the upgrade. So we won't buy anything for now. And Lodestone built. Now we can just come back here whenever we want. So it's time to go get back on with archaeology. Okay, it's time to pick up our assistant qualification at the Archaeology Guild. So the reason why I'm putting so much focus on archaeology early is basically for one, unexpected diplomacy, because it's going to make getting some of the reps up early that we'll have to work on, such as God Wars 2 rep, Nemi Forest rep for reads, rerolls, and there's one other one that I can't remember right now. And also add about 60, I believe, somewhere around 60 archaeology, you can get mobile as an archaeology relic. 
which halves the cooldown of like surge and stuff, which will be insanely useful for divine caches and just generally moving around the world. And it also frees up a perk slot early on in the game, which when getting combination perks is quite tricky, actually kind of helpful. So yeah, those are the three main things I'm after. Well, the two main things I'm after, I'm going to leave the 500 hit point relic in there for a while simply because I don't plan to go past 70 archaeology until I get invention unlocked so that I can make the auto screener. Training archaeology without the auto screener is just kind of painful if I'm being honest. Something else important that I need to grab is the wicked hood. Now this is great because it allows you to grab out uh, a bunch of essence. That was, that was an accident. Yep, every day we can just open this up, take runes. And we can actually teleport over to the air altar. We haven't even done rune mysteries yet, but we'll deposit these, deposit that. And we'll head over to the air altar once a day. I guess you could also do the mind altar. It probably gives a bit more XP. Maybe? Not actually sure. But air runes are more useful to us at the moment, so we will just make all of these essence into air runes. Okay, so every piece of honey we collect here is 84. 3 XP it looks like, or 83 and a half. So if we punch that into a calculator, we'll say 83 XP. This is 14,000 XP in farming per day just for doing these beehives. So yeah, pretty much unbeatable amount of farming XP for the time investment at this stage in the game. So it is good sync we're going to be keeping up with for quite a while. One to add to the list is picking up bomb vials from Jetix, as well as just going to pick up some vials of water because I'm going to need them for making herbal stuff. Also, the white berries are very useful. Uh, Limpwort roots going to be useful for training. I think the beads are useful for making magic potions, but these are the main two to pick up the white berries and the Limpwort roots. Uh, the unicorn horde dust isn't particularly agree just to get. But the reason I came over here is actually I need to finish up the daily challenges for today so that we can claim all the weekly rewards. So that is make two potions, make 12 bows, and kill 15 enemies. So let's make the two potions first of all. And there we go, all the daily challenges done, which means we can claim all the weekly rewards as well. So I didn't actually know this, but when you make a new account, you actually get the weekly track like cleared up to the day you made the account on so you don't miss any of the first week which is quite nice so we get some shattered anima which that's a tiny amount that's not gonna make it much difference but we have four vip tokens for slayer very very nice a large benefit gift offering arm sapling i guess is some nice uh farming xp diamond necklace phoenix necklace don't know if that's gonna be useful uh, challenge skip token, some oddments, the weekly reset token, small dungeon box, that one's not going to do much, we don't have that much of a dungeoneering level. Slayer XP lamp, I'm going to put this into ranged, early range training is kind of a pain compared to the others because it just doesn't have very good AoE for quite a while. And yeah, can I, okay no, that's got to go in the bank. So that's another thing ticked off our general tick list let's see what else we can get ticked off next on the list coming up to the dungeoneering tutor to get the ring of kinship this is a not one click teleport but a safe teleport to Damonheim. if i had come and grabbed this before i uh, died to the hobgoblins maybe we could have avoided that whole accident well this is uh is this new it looks very different tower I remember I thought they were like little circles on the floor for the port from free quest line but this is much more obvious I definitely missed the circles on the floor at the times when doing when doing this quest line on my main so I appreciate that we're gonna kick off new foundations now because it takes two days to work through this quest you need to buy a lot of limestone bricks and you just straight up can't buy enough in one day I don't believe. Maybe you can do it if you go and buy them from Keldegrim, but I don't think I can get to Keldegrim just yet. So we'll just start it off now by the limestone brick 
bricks. And then tomorrow we can buy the rest of them and get that done. We're going to need a bunch of construction levels anyway, so best to get it done. I think doing all the construction for this quest ends up getting you to like 50 construction or something pretty silly. So uh, yeah, very, very nice early experience. It's kind of nice to have a way to do it that's not just making chairs, to be honest. Okay, so as soon as you clear out the zombies, you can come over to Bill and access his shop. We need like 380 of these limestone bricks. We're going to need way more than that in total, so I am probably just going to be buying the full 250 for a few days. But unfortunately, you can't buy them noted, I don't believe, so it's just going back and forth. I'm assuming this is also going to be our long-term construction training plan. Because I believe it's significantly more resource efficient than other methods of training. For now, we need to build up some wooden frames, stone wall segments, build the workshop, but we're gonna pick this up tomorrow once Bill has restocked. Okay, it's time to just rip this band aid off. I gotta get 50 rune crafting at some point, so may as well get it done right here and now. I don't remember how long this takes, but let's just grind it out in one go. Get 50 rune crafting, then we can start making bizwax using elemental runes from the Void Knight shop. And I have no idea where I got 700k from, but we're getting money, so we may as well start turning it into something useful. And there we go, 50 rune crafting done. This took a few hours, but not too bad. So with that done, we now have access to the small, medium, and large, large pouches, which I think if I'm gonna train more rune crafting past this, I'll probably do it via necromancy rune crafting. At least until we get to the point where we can do blood rune crafting, because if I remember rightly, bloods are very, very high in demand on an iron. So now I need to go grab a bunch of elemental runes. So I'm going to head over to Aubrey's rune shop and the Void Knight rune shop and grab enough runes to be able to make Vizwax for the day. That'll give us some quick charges for home tellies, which is a pretty big quality of life, actually. Pretty, pretty huge. Yep, it looks like 58 is the best we're going to get today, which is unfortunate, but considering we're only using elemental runes and that's, what, 500 quick charges, should be good enough. But the other thing you can use Vizwax for is re-rolling and extending your daily challenges. Now, extending is nice because it can help you guarantee get the full track even when you miss a day. And considering that the end of this week has a death touch dart, I definitely want to keep on top of our dailies this week. Well, we've now got enough limestone bricks to finish up new foundations, so let's crack on with that. And port for infantry, or new foundations completed, built all the walls, and got up to 44 construction. I still am shocked how much this quest improved early construction training. You barely have to put any resources into it now. It's actually kind of nice. Now, I do want to get all the buildings actually built, However, I think I need a lot of different woods now. So workshop tier two needs teak. Town hall needs oak. That's actually not too bad. Chapel needs oak. Command center needs willow. Okay, these aren't actually too bad. So the amount of logs you need for a frame is 12. So we need 144 willow logs. We need 240 oak logs and 240 teak logs. That's actually quite a lot of wood cutting to get done. So it would be nice if we had our log boxes made, but we barely have any fletching at the moment. So we do actually need to train that up because we want to do tourist trap to get our agility up. 30 agility is the last requirement we have for Evil Dave's big day out, which would be a huge amount of magic XP at this point in the game. So working towards tourist trap seems like the way to go. Unfortunately, I need something to AFK at the moment because I'm about to go raid, so it might just end up being some more archaeology. We shall see. And indeed, we shall see in the next episode. If you got to this part of the video, I'm going to assume you liked it. And if you want to see more of the Iron Man, then come check us out on Twitch or make sure to subscribe to the channel for more episodes. For now, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll catch you again next time.